Hello, everyone, and welcome. At the sound of the trumpet, you know that means it is time to begin. Please put your hands together and welcome our host and presenter today from the Stockswish.com. Please welcome. <laughs> Kevin and everyone at Online Trader Central. Welcome, my name is Melissa Armo and I own a company called The Stock Swoosh. And today I'm here to talk about trading and specifically about making $1,000 a day day trading. I'm a day trader and we're gonna talk about trading on the side of institutional money. Now, the strategy that I trade daily in the market looks for and pinpoints institutional money in the market. $1,000 a day is, is a good amount of money to make. It's enough money to make that you could support yourself if you wanted to trade and day trade for a living. So I don't know why you're here, if you're here for the idea of just learning more about trading or uh, specifically about tra day trading as a career. But when I decided that I wanted to trade, I really had the objective that I wanted to do it for a career. And if you get to the point where you're making even $500 actually a day, uh, that equates to enough that you could really support yourself. But a thousand dollars a day is five grand a week, and that's enough to really make a living doing this. So let's just get started. If you have any questions, you can email me at melissa at the stockswoosh.com. You can also go and follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Pinterest, and Skype. And we're going to get started here. Now, let's talk about institutional power. What I mean by institutional power is banks and hedge funds. So becoming a successful trader and investor requires becoming a specialist in really defining where the banks and hedge funds are buying or selling a stock. Now, I happen to prefer to short stocks. I'll go over that a little bit more in the lecture. But banks and hedge funds buy or sell uh, stocks and short them. Comprehending how to redefine and train with the power of hedge funds and institutions will have a huge positive impact on your profitability as a trader. Why? Because they really move stocks. Uh, they move stocks with money and momentum. And as a trader, that's how you're really going to make money by getting in the stock, whether it's long or short, with the correct momentum. And I've devised a way to read the footprints of hedge funds and banks trading in the market. So this is how it's possible to make this kind of money. It's possible to be successful consistently. And that is really the key and, and also to become wealthy, if you learn how to do it correctly, by trading on the side of hedge fund money and bank money, okay? You're really just writing the coattails of the institutional moves. You're seeing the setup, you're seeing the stock to trade, you're getting the pick, and then you're taking the trade. And you're flowing with the move, with the power of the money, not against it. This is how it will produce consistent and large winning trades for you. Many, many people wanna go against this. It does not provide consistent results. And again, if this is something that you want to do for a living, you have to have the consistent results because if you're relying on being a day trader to pay your bills, you have to know you're going to be able to make XYZ amount of money each week or each month. So if you want to make $1,000 a day in the market, the only way that will happen consistently is if you're trading on the side of institutional money, which is really what moves the market in the first place. So it's about trading with power. You've got to learn what this looks like. Now, Many of you may be trading, and some of you may not be trading, but I think it's very, very important to ask yourself if you want to trade, why do you want to trade? And if you're trading now, why are you trading? And not only that, how much money do you actually want to make trading? Uh, do you want to make a little bit of money or a lot? I think any, any amount of money that has a comma in it that you make per day, and I'm just using the 1,000 as an example, it could be 2,000, it could be more, but any amount of money like that, I consider a lot of money as a day trader to make. But I do think it's important for you to know before you actually get into it what your goals are, okay? That helps you pinpoint what type of strategy you're gonna trade, when you're gonna get in, when you're gonna get out. Otherwise, what happens is, and this is what many people do and why many people uh, are challenged in reference to trading, they just get run over by stocks, they change their mind what they're gonna do every different day, they do a different strategy, they get jostled around and they basically end up nowhere and they really end up losing and losing money in their accounts and just losing period. So strategically, it's important to be very focused. It's like if you were starting a business, you would have a strategic business plan. You'd say, these are my goals. This is what I'm going to do to get to the goals. This is how much money I'm going to spend on this, that and the other thing so that I can make this much money by the end of the calendar year. And you, you really have to look at trading as a business. So why trade at all? Well, you could do it for a career. 
I think this is the main, main thing that a lot of people come to me and they say they really are tired of a job and they want to do something different. For me, I wanted to get out of my mortgage job. I was doing mortgages for a long time and I just was starting to make less money because the mortgage industry changed and I decided that I really needed to make a career change. So I found out about day trading. Now at that time, I didn't know what strategy to do. I had absolutely no clue. And then I just started doing a million different things. And then I realized that there was something to gaps, which is what I'm going to talk about today. It's the only strategy I trade. And I realized that it was something that I could be consistent in because if you're going to do this for a career, you have to have the level of consistency, meaning that you have to have the trade, you have to have the setup uh, almost every day. Now, every once in a while, there might be a day where you don't trade, where somebody doesn't meet the criteria, but that's not often. If you want to do this for a career, then you have to take it seriously. Part of the seriousness of that is number one, learning what to do. Number two, deciding each day you're going to take one trade or two trades and how much you're going to risk per trade and how much you want to make. This is all part of having the plan of action. So if your plan of action is to make $1,000 a day day trading, is this enough money that you could pay your bills? Is this enough that if you accomplish this, you could actually quit your day job and it could be your annual income? So you kind of have to backtrack. I don't know. Everybody lives in a different place in the world. A lot of people here are from the U.S. Some are outside of the U.S. But I think you really kind of need to know before you get into this, what, what, am, what is my goal? Now, let's say you have a small account and you don't have enough money to immediately run out and make $1,000 a day. You can still have a plan of action, a business plan saying, I'm going to learn how to do this. I'm going to make $500 a day. And then in six months, I'm going to move it up to risk more to make the thousand and so on and so forth. At least you have a plan to do that so that you can get to the point where you could quit your day job and actually do this for a living. And of course, one of the nice things about trading is that if you make this kind of money, which equates to about 200 some thousand dollars a year, you, you, it's a good living. I mean, you could spend money on luxury items and other things. And really, I don't trade for that many hours a day. I trade just the morning period. I'll talk to you about this in a little bit, but I'm usually done in the first 30 minutes of the day. Maximum, maybe the first hour. I like to be in and out of things quickly, okay? Now, if you have uh, another job, depending on where you live in the world in the time zone, I'm in Eastern time zone, you could trade and have your other job. In other words, let's just say you love your career. You could keep your career, keep the job that you have right now, and just make more money by trading and your regular job. So obviously then you'd have more money to buy more luxury items, and that's another benefit. But for me, one of the things was I did mortgages for so long and I worked so many hours that the benefit of trading for me was the less stress. I, it's just so much less stressful to not have to work so many hours a day. For me, I really, really, I, got, I just got to the point with my mortgage job where I was working seven days a week and, and I really had no life. With trading, the market's only open Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And the strategy I trade in gaps really sets up right into the open when the market opens at 9.30. So if I'm not in a trade by 10 a.m. Eastern time, then I'm not even taking anything that day. Now, most days I do trade and I do take something, but it is a lot less stressful for me and a lot less hours. Of course, I know how to trade. Once you get to the point that you learn my system, if you want to learn and you do it, it will be very easy for you and, and, and not stressful at all. It's just about getting to that point. But if you really want to make it happen, you've got to look at the bigger picture. A lot of people are very short-sighted about the market. You've got to look at the bigger picture. How are you going to change careers? How are you going to make this much money in your trading? How are you going to shift from where you are right now? Let's say you're a losing trader, or let's say you've never traded before ever. You don't even know anything about the market. You know nothing about stocks. You've never read a chart. It's about making the transition and looking at the bigger picture. How am I going to get there? Not all these things necessarily happen in a day or a week overnight, but if you look at the bigger picture, you say, this is worth it. It's worth it to put the effort in to learn the information that Melissa has to teach, and it's worth it to put the work in because in one month or three months or six months, I could be at my goal or closer than I am right now today. Stocks really in the market have loads of power, momentum, and the potential for money behind them. And this is one of the reasons that I love to trade. It's, it's a thrill, it's a, it's a thrill to trade and make money in five, 10 minutes. I don't think there's really anything 
like it. Someone said last week the best thing about trading is he worked from home. Actually, that's not even because I did mortgages and I worked from home for years. I've, I've worked from home for the last I don't know how many years. I, I don't even remember the last time I actually went to the office ever. So for me, it's just like I've always worked from home. But the best thing I find about day trading, my strategy is that it's I'm done really quick and the amount of money that I can make versus the time that I'm actually in the trade. That to me is the best thing about my strategy and the best thing I love about day trading except for the fact that many people that day trade, trade all day long till four o'clock, I don't do that, and make nowhere near the kind of money that I make in the time amount that I make it. So it's about the effort that I put into something and the money that I pull out of it in that time frame that makes it so exciting for me and invigorating and something that I love to do. So one of the reasons that you can make $1,000 a day trading is because there's millions and millions of dollars that run through the market in stocks, specifically stocks, and you can use ETFs too, in hedge funds or banks, okay? It's not just millions, it's actually billions. They move stocks. They lift them when they buy them, and they sell out of them or short them, and then the stocks drop. And I usually do a different stock every single day. So it's very rare that I would even trade the same symbol two days in a row. Sometimes you have day traders are doing the same symbol every day. Well, there's many days where you can't do anything in a stock. Even if you're trend trading it, you can't really any make any money in it in the right entry and exit with the correct target. The one thing I teach in my class is not only how to pick which stock to trade every day, which is a different one, but also the correct entry, risk to reward, and target, which is very, very important if you're day trading because you're really like chunking it out. You're going in and you're just grabbing that money immediately and then you're quickly, quickly getting out. This is not a type of thing where you're an investor. Day trading is something you're going in, you're taking the trade, you're grabbing the money, you're getting out. And you have to have a thoughtful process for doing that. So I devised a method to quantify in the market where the hedge funds are running their money and banks. And I teach a class on how to calculate that. The class is called the Golden Gap Course. This course teaches a strategy on how to trade gaps. The course teaches a 26-point rating system to find the best stock to trade each day. And this is really how I'm able to find which stock to trade. It is a rating method, and it quantifies and pinpoints the right stock to trade, whether going long or short. The course also teaches you what direction to trade the stock on the day, so you are following the institutional money. And the course teaches you chart analysis and technical analysis on an advanced level. So I'm looking for the footprints of institutions when they're stepping in and when they're pulling themselves out. So I'm looking for the points. I rank the stock every day pre-market. You could do it at 7 a.m., 7.30, 8 o'clock, 8.30. The market opens at 9.30. You could wait till 9 a.m., but you have to do it before the market opens. So... You look for stocks that are gapping, whether up or down, and then you use a 26-point rating system to rate them. The object of it is to try to find gaps, stocks that are gapping, I'll go over that in a minute, that have a high probability of directional bias for the entire day, meaning that you could actually trade them all day if you want to. Big moves on the day, meaning you're, I'm usually looking for a dollar move in something or more, the two we're going to go over here today actually had tremendous moves last week. One had over a $4 move. I'm also looking for early confirmation of the bias and the move between 9.30 and 10 a.m. And then precise entries with follow through and a good risk to reward. Now, risk to reward means what? It means for every dollar that I risk in the trade, I'm looking to get a payout of $3 or more. Some trades you may risk a dollar, make a dollar. In an ideal world, every trade you risk, you make a, you'd make $3 on a dollar risk. And some trades you risk a dollar and can make $10. And those are the really, really good ones. Now, right now, it is earnings season in the U.S. stock market, which means uh, companies report their earnings in the morning and at night. And stocks usually gap on the earnings. They could gap up or they could gap down. But there's lots and lots of stocks to trade during the earnings season period. So it is a wonderful time to trade and make money in the market. And you really got to get, you know, the moves of these things into the open early before all the momentum comes in. A lot of day traders are waiting till after 10 o'clock to try to get in a stock to see what the directional bias is for the day. And I'm usually out by then. And 80% of the move of the stocks that move actually happen before 10 o'clock. 
So in other words, if you're waiting till after 10 a.m. to get in it, you're missing 80% of the move. And then, then you're not getting the risk to reward, which we're going to go over here in some of the trades. So now let's just talk about what I was saying about power. How can you tell the footprint of power? Well, this was the gap from Friday. The symbol, the ticker symbol is PWR. This is a daily chart. Now, PWR, it gapped. So what is a gap? A gap is when the stock closes at one price the night before, which it closed up here around 26 something, and the next day it opened at like 23 something. So the stock gapped down. Stocks can gap up or gap down. So you would see this in the morning before 9.30 and use my 26 point rating system to determine if this stock is a long of the day, do you wanna buy it or do you wanna short it? In other words, the rating system that I teach tells you what to do with this gap and where the institutional money will go. The institutional money could have rallied it. It could have bought it higher into the prior support. However, I rated it and it ended up being a good gap to short. And so this was a short. Now this, you can see, had a tremendous move from the high of the day up here at 23 and the low it broke, it actually broke 19 and went more than $4. This is amazing. And this is a great example of the power of institutions in the market because no stock can move $4 on the day selling off like this, which was a consistent sell-off that it had really the entire day. You could have played this all day. No stock can do that without institutional power. So this was institutional selling that came into the stock on this day of the PWR. This was Friday. Okay, You would never have a stock move like that with just traders. So my reigning system teaches how to find something like PWR, which I narrowed down and pinpointed exactly. And you just go through the checklist. And this is what I do. I have a devised plan to do it. This takes away the stress and the anxiety of waiting for the live day to try to determine what to do, scanning on the live day, going back and forth, not knowing what strategy to trade. I only trade gaps. I prefer to focus on shorts, although I will go long. And I have everything figured out that I want to do PWR even before the market opens. Again, this goes into the idea of alleviating the stress and being very focused so that you can consistently make $1,000 a day or more. Otherwise, you're floundering. And then you get nervous because it's, you're excited, the market's open, your platform's up, you want to make money, and all of a sudden you're taking three trades and you're down because you weren't prepared. Preparation really is so key in order to be consistently profitable as a trader. And by preparation, I mean before the, the market opens, not after, okay? So who makes gaps, which is a strategy? Institutions. They are created with institutional money. Like the gap itself, when the stock actually closed to 26 in PWR and gapped down to 23, that an institution made the gap. That's what makes gaps. The professional gaps that happen and play out in stocks are formed by one thing and one thing only, large institutional money. Because the stock gapped down $3 overnight. Therefore, you need a way that will help you pick the correct direction to play the gap. You got to know if you should go long or short it because you won't make money shorting a stock if it rallies and you won't make money going long a stock if it falls like PWR. You've got to rate the gap per the 26 point rating system to confirm that the large money will flow with it. And by having a formula to rate and qualify the gap, you get confirmation and conviction that the large institutional money is on your side and then you just play it. Gaps are an event and create a sense of urgency. The sense of urgency is what? We better get in this. It's going to move. Or if you're long a stock, you say, wow, I better get out of this. The stock's dropping. And as you see, if you were long PWR at the open, you were, you were, the price was 23. If you were long that stock and you waited till the end of the day to get out, you got crushed because it dropped and broke 19. So this system that I train as a day trade can also be used to help you with longer term positions because you could rate the gap and determine if you should take it out or get in it, okay? That's another way to use it if you're doing overnights for swing trades. But the idea is that it's forcing an action by participants of the stock. So this is why gap trading is incredibly powerful. Trading gaps is a powerful and profitable way to trade because you are trading on the side of power money, okay? Does everyone understand that? And you can ask me questions here as we're going along today. If you can type it in the room, I can see everyone's questions if you have any. Now let's talk about what I named my system. I named it Golden Gaps. What is a Golden Gap? A Golden Gap is a gap that moves in the direction of the gap. 
It is called a golden gap because professional traders and investors are making and creating the gap. So in the case of a bullish gap, professionals are buying the stock. Professionals meaning hedge fund managers, professional traders, banks, traders at, uh, on the floor of the banks. Therefore, the stock moves higher in the trading day. In the case of a bearish gap, professionals are selling and are shorting the stock. Therefore, the stock moves lower in the trading day. And again, you want to be with this. But I do prefer bearish gaps like the PWR. Gaps that gap down have two things happening in them to create the gap. If they rate well per the 26-point rating system, they usually have the shorts and selling. And that's what I love, okay, about shorting. They have double the potential for the move because you've got all of that going into it. So I really prefer to short. But the idea of doing gaps with the rating system is that it just directs you where the institutional money is. Because that's the only way that you're going to get the momentum for the move, whether it's 50 cents, 75 cents, a dollar, two dollars, or four dollars on the day. It's so much easier to make money if you're going with the momentum than if you're against it. A lot of people scalp and they do reversals. It's, it's I would never be able to risk the kind of money that I risk for trade, which is anywhere between a thousand and fifteen hundred dollars, depending on the quality of the gap. I would never be able to do that on a one minute chart as a day trader if I didn't have 100% conviction that I had the institutions moving in my direction. In other words, I would never go against what the institution's doing in a stock on the live day because you can get run over. And this is how you can very, very easily lose and you don't get the follow through. Ultimately, it's really about having a set of principles just like, just like anything else you would do, you know, that you, you would do for a career. So what are the underlying principles? Why are you taking the trade? What is the reason? Well, you have to think about it. What is the framework for buying or, or selling something, okay? Or even shorting something for that matter. Having a checklist which meets the criteria is like your own set of principles. It's like your trading plan. This is what I do myself. I still do it after seven years of trading. I do it. I do it every morning. I fill up my worksheet. I never skip it, and I never will, because it is my checklist, and it is a blueprint to follow the stock correctly, so I know I'm doing the right thing. There's no way about getting around the fact that when you trade, you're taking risk. The risk is the money. If you don't take risk in taking a trade or take the risk in the trade of the money, then you won't make any money. You have to take risk in order to profit in the market, but it really, really helps you if you have 100% conviction it's going to work, have the worksheet filled out, know the gap rates according to the system, and you have it all set up and situated before 9.30. So you have time to think about it, get ready to go, know the target, know what you're looking for. So ultimately having a focus is very important. I know a lot of you in here may be here today because you're trying to get a focus. Maybe you don't have a focus. Maybe that's why you're here to learn what I do. I think no matter what you do in the market, whether you're day trading or swing trading, no matter what it is you do, it is so important to have a focus. In other words, don't do 10 different strategies if you're not even making money on one. Just pick one, get good at that one, one thing, make money with that, and then you can do others. A lot of people aren't even making money with one thing though. So don't spread yourself across the board. This isn't a, a jack of all trades, a master of none kind of thing, the market. It is a serious business. Whether you're doing it part-time or full-time because you're risking your hard-earned money when you trade, you have to have a focus. You've got to get good at one thing. And quite frankly, that's all you really need to make money. And the best days I ever had, I'm only take one trade. I take one trade and I'm done. So that's all that you need. I, I, I've talked about this in the live trading room, but it's, it's, it's really about training your brain. This may sound unusual uh, to talk about in a, in a trading lecture, but, but one of the reasons that I am so good at trading now is not just the level of experience I have for seven years doing this. It's the fact that I've trained my brain day after day after day after day to look for the same thing. What is it? It's the 26-point rating system. So what I do is I get up in the morning and I'm reading the stock and I'm looking for the same thing. And then I'm looking for it the next day. And then I look for it on Wednesday and Thursday and Friday. And if I get it, I just do it. And I, if I get it, I just do it. And it has to meet the criteria. So I am getting up and I'm just training my brain every day. And for example, here to look for the red circle. I'm looking for the red circle. And then I get up the next day and look for the same circle. It's in different stocks, but it's the same circle. Now, 
many people don't trade like this, okay? But do you see here, this is how you're consistent. Now you might trade Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you might take a loss. Friday, Monday, you're winning the rest. It's about the consistency though, and you're training your brain to do it every day. So the losses are small and you don't have that many and you know what to look for. And you also have conviction in it and it alleviates the stress. Now over here, this trader here, this person does not trade like me. This is how many people actually trade. They get up, one day they look for a long, one day they're looking for a short, the next day they're watching what the market's doing, the next day they're doing an ETF, the next day they're doing a climactic trade, the next day they're doing a buy setup. Every day they're doing something different. They never know what they're doing even before the market even opens, they don't even know what they're doing. They may be doing many, many different stocks, going long and short the same stock the same day, a million things, you don't have the consistency. You see here of all these days, you don't even have two circles that are the same color. So what do you think your monetary results will be in your trading account? They will be all over the place, okay? So the consistency for doing the same strategy, even in the same direction most of the time, actually results in consistent money in your account, okay? This is a very important thing that I teach all of my traders. It matters, okay? This is also how you get good this is how you lose and fail, and you never get good at anything. Now, does anyone have any questions on anything so far? You really have less losses with focus. The rating system, which pinpoints the institutional moves, helps you with the focus, and it takes away the anxiety of what direction to trade, okay? Now, let's get back to PWR. Again, if you were long this stock, let's say you bought it the day before in here, and you were long the stock, and you thought you had a fabulous long, and you were up money on the day before on the Thursday, and you went to bed, if you got out of bed in the morning, you were actually down in your trade. If you got out immediately, you were still down. If you waited to the end of the day, you were down way more. And this is what happens a lot of times to people. Now, you could have been in it long. The stock could have gapped down, which it did. Let's just say you used my system and you rated the gap. And actually, it didn't, didn't rate good as a short. Let's pretend it, it did, though. But I'm saying let's pretend you rated it and it did not meet my criteria to short. Let's say it actually said, oh, my goodness, this is a long. Then you would have known that. And then you would have known to go long and on the day, stay in your long, even if you were down in it, stay in it until you got it back up through the price until it rallied and go on long with the day's day trade. So do you see how the system that I created can be used for so many different things? It can tell you what to do if you're, if you're in something. It can tell you what to do if you're not in it to know how to take it, okay? Very, very useful way to trade. And also I have people, I don't do options, but I have people that use my system to do options trades. But you've got to get the timing right in the options and you also need to know how to take the option yourself. I don't teach that, but the rating system teaches the directional bias of how to trade the stock. And that will help you in the two examples I just gave, whether you want to shorten or go long it, or as a day trader overnight. Now, PWR did something amazing, which does not happen all the time, meaning every day or every week, but actually PWR opened and swooshed. One of the things that I teach in my Golden Gap class is something called the stock swoosh. It is what I named my company, and it also is a play that I do in the market. It is something that I will see quite often probably between now and the end of the year at, during the earnings season because you see more swooshes in earnings season than in non-earnings season. But stock swooshes happen in bullish gaps and bearish gaps. In the case of PWR, it swooshed down. So it had a bearish swoosh, okay? So here was a one minute chart of the PWR. See it? This is the open here at 9.30. Now, if you were in the trading with, room with me Friday, if you rated the gap and knew the PWR was a good gap to short, you would have shorted this stock. Short price was 22.90, stop was 23.10. I always use hard stops when I trade. The risk was 30 cents. The risk is the difference between the entry and the stop. I always have a hard stop, means if it hits the number, I'm out. This again alleviates the risk because I have a fixed loss. 
I'm not going to lose more than a certain amount. Okay. This helps you stay consistent too. The exit on this into the first drop was 2150. It was a beautiful move. It moved more than a dollar into the first drop. And if you took this trade and risked $1,200, you made $5,200 in four minutes. Now let's go back and look at it. Here was the entry. You got in at 9.32. Boom. And you got out right there. And you could have gone back to bed. And this is what I'm talking about, about institutional power. Because you would not have a stock that drops where you could make four or $5,000 in four minutes or three minutes. Boom. Like that without selling action and shorting. And this is why you have to get this right. But you never would have gotten this if you didn't know for this. And you wouldn't have known that unless you rated the gap. And now here's the gap. You see this, this is a one minute chart. This is where the stock closed up here around 2620-ish and then it opened the next day down here around 23 something. Okay. This was a beautiful move. Amazing. Okay. Now, as it turns out, like I said, it continued all day. Who would have known? Well, you would have known because it opened and swooshed. Okay. So I teach this play, how to find the play and how to play the play of the stock swish in my golden gap class. But it's one of the best things I've figured out. I've never seen it not work when it sets up. And the reality is that it tells you that you can hold the stock to a larger target or redo it if you want. Now, let's just say that's not in your trading plan. Let's say your trading plan is I trade every day. I take one trade and I'm done. That's fine. That's actually what I do most of the days. But you could have replayed this, okay? Now, let's look at the second trade. The second trade in this was a short, again, at 21.92. Stop was 22.15. Risk was 23 cents. Again, your risk should be the same or close to the same. If you risked about $1,000 or 920, took 4,000 shares here for the second trade and stayed in it, stayed in it to the dream target. You were, you were in it for longer than five minutes, but still very, very quickly, you could have made $11,680. Now you would have had to risk 920 bucks, but that's still a phenomenal trade. That is still a phenomenal trade. That is shorting the stock and getting the drop all the way into here. And you're still in it though, from this entry to here, you're still done and out within the first hour of the day. Kay Gerard, if I pronounced your name right, I'm sorry if I didn't. Do we need any other system, loan learning or system, or level two quotes? You have to have a live trading platform to trade US stock equities where you can take a position long or short, and that includes having a level two because you can't take the live position without a level two. The level two is where you're taking the live position. Now the charts you have to have so that you can rate the gap because I'm rating the gap with the charts. I use two charting packages actually. All of a sudden now I actually I actually have three, but you need, you need at least one. I have two I use. One is my live platform and one I use just as a secondary to check the price and I actually just signed up for a third to double check my price. But either way, you've got to have at least one charting package of software. You must have a level two. You need the, the quotes for the US market and the NASDAQ and the New York exchange, okay? And you have to be able to short. Now, this was phenomenal, okay? I don't always do the second trade, but in the case of this, you actually could have done two trades. And, and this is the kind of thing that you get in earnings season. You will get stocks if you're trading with me between now and the end of the year that move like this. And, and the thing is the benefit of learning my system is that you would know that this, that did it stock swoosh. You wouldn't know before the open that it swooshed. You wouldn't know that the gap was good. You wouldn't know to short it instead of going long it. And then when you took the trade and took the trade and saw that it swooshed, then you know that you could do it a second time and you know it'd go to a bigger number. But I figure out the targets even way before I even trade. And I put them in the live trading room in the morning but I teach in the class actually how to figure out the targets so that you can do them yourself. Now, if you took the first trade and made 5,200 and took the second trade and made $11,680, your total risk in both trades was $1,770. That is substantial. That is an advanced, advanced risk. Let's say you don't want to risk that much. You could risk half of that. You still would have had a phenomenal day whether you did one trade or two trades or both trades, it wouldn't even matter. The total risk to reward though, if you did both was 9.5. That's amazing. 
And so if you risked $1,770 of PWR and did two trades on Friday, you made almost $17,000. That is your goal for the month, okay, basically. And this is why, getting back to what I'm saying, that it has to do with the focus. If you are not focused, you will never know to have done this or looked at it or known the entries or where to get in or where to get out or even how to size yourself to take the size even make that kind of money, okay? And how can you risk $1,000 if you don't know what you're doing? You can't or you shouldn't. You've got to get to the point where you learn it and you know what you're doing. So many people are so consumed with making money that they put the cart before the horse, so to think, with trading because a lot of times people have taken classes or traded themselves and they're down money from the market and then they're so, so consumed with making it back and making it back and making it back and trying to make it back. You, you, you can never go and say, I'm making it back. You can only move forward. You move forward and saying, today is a brand new day. I'm learning how to trade gaps. I'm going to do everything it takes to get good at this. And if I get good at this thing, I can make these trades with Melissa and make $11,000 or $16,000. And, and who cares what you did before that? You cannot reverse and go back in time. We can't go back in time machines. Trust me, if we could, I would have gone back. I, if I could go back in a time machine, let's see, where would I go? I would go back to probably the first month that I ever began day trading because I lost most of the money that I lost trading in the first three months. Literally, I would go back so far to the beginning, but it was too late and I can't go back and it doesn't even matter anymore. You can't go back. You can only move forward. There is only one direction. Well, I shouldn't even say that. You could stay stagnant. This is where a lot of people are as well. A lot of people are stuck stuck with their trading. They don't want to spend money on a class like mine. They don't want to take the time out of their life to learn something to get good. They're stuck and you won't be able to move forward and actually become profitable if you're stuck. So there's really only one direction that you really can go to become successful and that's move forward. But you could, you could, have, you could stay stuck. A lot of people I talk to are stuck. They're stuck mentally, emotionally, financially. They're just stuck. But you can't go back. So you could stay stuck or you can move forward. But the only way you're going to be successful is if you move forward. Okay. So anyways, getting back to the piggy here, I love to short. It's, it's, I love to short because of the, that kind of momentum that comes in so quick. And I really like to be in trades and out quickly. And shorts happen to move just very, very quickly. They move faster than longs because it just, so for some reason, selling action happens so fast because of the panic. And nobody's panicking when a stock's rallying. It's like people want to buy it. You get, you can make money going long, but you don't have the panic. And the panic brings in the quick moves, which I love. So again, talking about the institutional money, who made PWR fall Friday? Regular traders. No, there's no way, no way that regular traders made that stock gap down $3 and fall $4 on the day plus. It's, it's, it was impossible. The move from the high from the previous day of the close to the low of the day of the following day within 24 hours was more than $7. That would not happen with regular traders. It's institutions. It is hedge funds and banks in the market. And this is why it is extremely important to read the correct direction of bias for a gap or a stock or anything you're playing to know if, if an institution is going to grab hold of it and pull it down or push it up and go long it because the, the opposite thing could have happened here. Now that's not what happened, but it could have, okay? Now let's talk about another really good one here. This is GRMN. This was from Thursday. Again, I usually trade or look at a different stock every day. Stocks gap in the morning and at night. So you could be rating stuff actually right now, you could rate something. Right now at 5.09, there's stocks that are gapping. I usually like to wait to the morning. But GRMN was a gap. This happened on the 15th. The stock gapped down. It closed the night before here, and then it gapped down. And you rated the gap to determine if it was a short or a long. As it turns out, it was a short. This is another one that had a beautiful, beautiful move here in the day. Now let's look at GRMN. Stock closed the night before here, around 36-something, gapped down. Gapped down to 33-something. Opened, dropped, rallying, dropped, rallying. Here's the short. So again, you would have to know to short this, okay, to get the move. So you could have shorted this here and been out, or you could have shorted this here and been in for the longer move. 
Again, it depends where you are in the world or how long you want to trade. Now, the first short in this was 33.65. It was a 20 cent risk with 5,000 shares with a thousand dollar risk. Again, your risk should be the same or the similar. Exit was into the first drop. Okay, into the first drop here. Actually, this is this is supposed to be 30.33.10. That's a that's a numbered error there. It's 33.10 was the first drop. Total profit I made in this trade was 28.7109 in 10 minutes. And here I clipped my PL here. Now let's go back. Here was the entry, and here's the first drop. So again, the exit was 32 something. So you're, you're getting in it here, and you're getting out of it into here. Okay? And you're done. Now, it has to do with the amount of time that you want to spend in something. So let's just say like you took it, you could have gotten out of half, but if you let it rally back and it's done, and this is all it goes on the day, then you get back the profit. So usually I have goals, okay, this is part of the trading plan, you have to have goals, like how much money are you wanting to make? You know, you have to know. If you're risking a thousand and you're up almost three risk units, that's that's too much money to let go against you. Okay, so I took it all out. But this is again where you're using the money management. Now you could have retaken this here, but I didn't feel there was any reason to do that. I had my goal in for the day, but this stock did continue lower as well. Now we talked about the fact that in earnings season, stocks have big big moves. You want to see here the high of the day here of this stock was almost 34. The low of the day ended up being like 31 something. This stock had a $3 move on the day. Now, if you wait until after 10 o'clock to short the stock, you're getting in it around here. Do you see this? You're missing, again, 80% of the move. Meanwhile, I took it up here. Now, you could have taken it here and stayed in it all the way down. Again, the best thing to do if your goal is in, though, you really have to lower the stop if you're not going to get all out of it, which I did. But because you, you really have to money manage yourself in these things. But the entry for this one, the original entry then, if you took it and wanted to hold it all the way down, you could have held this stock then for more than $2. Price of the entry was the original entry at $33.65. The only difference is you're holding it. Exit was all the way down and actually broke $31.50. So if you wanted to stay in this trade until the full morning move, it actually was four hours. It was till early afternoon. You could have kept lowering the stop, lowering the stop, lowering the stop. You could have taken the exact same trade that I did and made over $10,000. Now, you, well, you would have had to hold it. So this is trading past the morning. So here's the original entry. This is just you're not getting out. You would have kept lowering the stop, lowering the stop, lowering the stop. But the risk is the same. It's 1000 bucks. Okay. Now, I do teach exit signs in the class. But, you know, at a certain point, you have to get out. And, and again, as I was saying, you have to keep lowering it. And lowering it and lowering it okay but this ended up going huge this ended up being a huge 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 play okay now you could have done it one trade in the morning let it rally back got in taken a second trade you could have risked two thousand dollars and you could have made almost seven hours and you could have made 13 grand on this again you could take it get out take it again get back in and get out there's so many different ways to play these. Personally, I like to do one trade and all out. But I will tell you again that if the quality of the gap is there with the rating system, you can hold these stocks to longer, bigger targets. But I think you need to be money managing them as far as your goals in the day for what your monetary goals is. Again, you got to know what that is. Does anyone have any questions for me so far about PWR or GRMN? Let me know. This is, again, a one-minute chart. I just squished it together so you could see the bigger, bigger picture here. Okay. So, ultimately, it's, for me, it's the idea that the time of the day that I'm spending to work, okay, trading gaps versus another strategy, it's just, for me, it's, it's one of these things where I love the idea that I can make $1,000, $2,000, $3,000, $4,000, $5,000 so quickly in the market in a strategy in a, in a quick time period. And, and I think you have to look and equate the amount of work that you're doing at your regular job now or another trading strategy you're doing now, okay, versus gaps. 
the momentum that happens in the gaps is because of the institutions. You've got to get the right pick. This is where the focus comes with the rating system. You've got to get the entry right. And you've got to have the risk to reward and take the size to get the move and add it up right. You have to know that if you take the entry at a certain point, it's a 20 cent stop or a 30 cent stop. You have to put the stop in. But this is where it has to do with the quality of your time. Is What is your time worth? It's not worth it to trade all day till four o'clock. And many, many people end up trading and doing multiple, multiple trades and then they end up losing. They make money in the morning and give it back or they're trading back and forth all day and their commissions are just adding up and adding up and adding up. And it's, it's insane. I used to do that when I first started. I don't do that anymore. And I haven't done that for a long time. But you really got to determine what your focus is so that you can be profitable. So how much money can you make trading gaps? Unlimited, unlimited. I'm just using some of these examples to say $1,000 a day, but obviously, you know, I made almost three grand in that one trade. You, you, the better that you get, the more that you will make, the more that you can risk. It is about correctly reading the side of money in charts. You've got to read price. You've got to read what the institutions are trading. You've got to have charts and learn the technical analysis skills for me to learn those charts to be able to see what the stock's going to do. Again, I teach this in my gap class. But I'm really reading the side of the institutional power. This is how you take yourself from being at one point and where the graph is going up, where your trading account and is making improvements. You're making more money over time, not less. Many people start at the beginning of the year and, and instead of making money by the end of the year, they're down. That is not something that you want to do. You want to be making progress with your trading account. You want to be making profitable trades. You want your account to be growing. You don't want it to be, to be faltering, okay? So I do have a system that I alone created. The only one that's doing it or teaching it, it's my system. It is a golden gap system that is a 26 point professional bearish gap rating system. The purpose of the system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using a checklist. So how are you gonna get to the point where you make $1,000 a day? You have to have a focus and a system to follow. You've gotta learn how to trade on the side of institutional money, learn how to read power money in the chart, Learn how to read the trend, very, very important as well to know if you're with it on the day as a day trade or against it, so you know where the targets are, what's the market doing. You've gotta learn how to read price. Price action is what I'm seeing when I'm reading the candlesticks and also in the level two. And that's how I'm determining the entries. And learn a system and a method that teaches you all of the above and more. And one of the main things that I was talking about earlier is not just the specifics of the technical analysis, but also the fact that you've got to train your brain right. That is a very important piece that will help you get good at this. Um, many people say, well, I'm, a, I'm, I'm an intuitive trader. It's because of the fact that I've trained my brain to just intuitively do it. I mean, I could probably trade in my sleep and rate gaps and pick things because I have trained my brain so well just to do things intuitively. But I still get up every day. I still fill out my worksheet. I still do the work and figure it out to have the focus because of the money that I'm risking and I'm running the live trading room. But you get to a point where you're doing something over and over and over and over and over again for 1,000 hours or 10,000 hours or 100,000 hours, it just naturally flows. And then you're not in that anxiety mode anymore when you're risking money. So again, like I was saying earlier, PWR did, did swoosh and I teach this in my Golden Gap class. It's called the Stock Swoosh. It's a very important thing that you can learn to do to make money that works in both directions, long or short. So the right information to focus on really in charts is the price. What is the price doing? Is it telling you the stock is being bought by institutions or sold out? And ultimately, that's how you make money as a trader. You've got to get in at the right price. And not only that, you have to get out at the right price. And, and this is how you're making money quickly, too. And gaps show you price on an advanced level, which allows a trader to predict the move the stock will make before it does. Trading gaps is a quality strategy because gaps are created by institutional money. And knowing this helps gives you conviction to trade and take the risk you need to make the profits. Trading gaps is a powerful strategy and this is really how professionals trade. They know what they're doing before the market opens. They know if they're going long or short. They have a method, they have a system. They know how much money they're risking. They know how much money they're gonna allow themselves to lose if the trade doesn't work. They know where they're gonna get out if it fails. They know how many trades they're gonna take on a day. They know their goal if they're up, okay? You have to act like this is something you're serious about, like a real job, which it is for me. And, and I'm teaching people how to do that even if they're doing it part-time. And the hours are part-time, but the money that you make is not if you do it well. So you can use a sophisticated level of price information to enter trades and take sizable positions. 
taking sizable positions will help you attain the income level you dream of. So reading gaps is a skill that you can learn and you really got to get good at it. So the 26 point checklist makes you focus on the right information. It's a skill that I teach in the class and if you'd like to learn it, the class is called the Golden Gap Course. I teach the strategy, the 26 point rating system, what stock to trade each day, and I teach advanced technical analysis. It teaches you how to take the trades, how to enter them, how to make money in the US stock market, how to pick which symbol to do every day, how to determine the targets, the support, the resistance. And again, this is a new career, if it's something you really want to do that you can do and learn from home. Now, there are other places out there that teach gaps. Most of them don't teach gaps correctly. I only do this one thing, that's it, and I'm an expert in gap training. And as far as I'm concerned, this is the most consistent strategy that exists, not just in reference to gaps, but in reference to day trading. Uh, a lot of people find day trading challenging. To me, it is very easy. I see it, I do it. If I don't see it, I don't do it. If it doesn't work, I take the stop, I'm done. I'm looking for one thing every day. So if you want to take the class, the class is this weekend, October 24th and 25th. I teach the multiple entries, six different entries in the class, the plays, how to trade the open. Again, I'm taking the trades into 930. I teach you how to book the money, looking for the risk to reward and the exit signs. And most importantly, I teach you how to get conviction in the market, which a lot of people sometimes have lost if they've been taking different classes and doing different things. You've got to regain that before you really go back into trading, expecting yourself to be profitable. You've got to educate yourself if you want to do this because it's serious. It's not something where you can just shadow somebody else's trades. I don't allow people to join the live trading room unless they've taken the class. That is a decision that benefits traders to actually learn and get good. Now you can do a trial if you want to email me for a week, if you want to trial the room this week prior to the class, but everyone that's in the live trading room has taken my Golden Gap class so they know what they're doing. So they know what they're doing when I'm calling the trades live to take them with me. The only way you'll get good or make money is if you actually learn it. It's a, it's a pipe dream for people that think they're just going to copycat people without actually learning it. You'll never make any real money in the market consistently unless you learn what to do, which is part of the investment of your time and your energy and your money to take the class. And as I was saying earlier, it's really about living in the now. Don't look back and question yourself about things that you've done, losses you've had or, or classes you've done that you didn't make any money or or, or anything you've done, you say, why am I at this point in my life and I'm not making enough money in my regular career and I want to do something else? It, just let it, let, go, let it go. I say, have amnesia, okay? You've just got to move forward, decide this is something you want to do. You will never get to the point where you're making 200 grand a year training unless you get on the right track. So you can do it today, you can do it tomorrow, you can do it next week, you can wait, you can stay static, but looking back at the past isn't going to get you where you need to be. Many traders live in the past and they're trying to make up for the past losses. The market could care less about anything that happened that you lost money in in the past in trades or in classes. The market moves forward every day. Tomorrow morning the market will open at 9.30 and move and do its thing like it does every day. And it will move forward and it will do whatever it's going to do. And it will do it the next day and the next day and the next day. And you kind of have to be in sync with that. You really have to be in sync with that like you're in sync with the market so you can move forward and do it and actually take the money out of the market every day. And if you want to do it for career, it's a great job because you can work from home. All you need is a computer and a brokerage account and a, uh, an internet connection, whether it's a laptop or, or a, a hard drive computer where you have a desktop. And you can start out by having a small goal. You can start out by having a big goal. I don't know what size of account, what money you have to risk. But if you really want to do this for a career, it can be something that you set a trading plan up for yourself to do it for a career. You've got to look and say, well, where do I want to be in a year from now? Where do I want to be in five years from now? Where do I want to be 10 years from now? Is that too far off to consider? The fact is no, actually. I can't even believe it, but time flies so much. It is almost the holidays and, and time just keeps ticking on. If you've been thinking about learning how to trade for six months or a year, uh, you know, you've already lost that time because it's almost 2016 and every moment you live, you have the choice to do something to change your future or you have the choice to do nothing. It's really up to you. If you're happy with your career, if you want to make more money in the market or if you're doing a trading strategy now that you're losing or you don't like, then maybe you want to consider learning something else. 
but you have to make the choice and decide and have a plan of action because time keeps moving on. And, and it really, it's almost 2016, which is crazy. Now, another thing to think about too is your retirement plan. Many people now are in jobs where they're not getting the same 401k matches, they're not getting the same uh, benefits. Trading, if you wanna keep your regular job, is something you can do on the side to maybe save for retirement, to have a savings. You don't have to quit your full-time job. Even if you're making 200 grand a year trading, you could save the money to use it for your retirement as well. I think that traders in the long run really tend to be short-sighted, particularly day traders. They want everything now, now, now. And we do live in a, a me, me, me society. I mean, I get it, I get it, okay? I get it because I was there when I started trading as well. I wanted to quit my mortgage job immediately, but I realized then that trading was more challenging than I thought. It was gonna take me time to learn it and I had to go through the process. This is a process. You maybe have already started the process prior to meeting up with me, but I can help shorten that um, and shorten that learning curve for you by training with me and teaching you in the class. You don't want to be short-sighted though, thinking about always the money, money, money. You have to think about learning it. It's like if you build it, they will come. You learn it, then the money will come. One day you're making $500, the next day you're making $2,000. And this is how it is. And you just got to get good. So if you really want to be wealthy, what you need is a plan of action. Unless you're born into money or win the lottery, no one really becomes wealthy overnight. And, and some people are lucky to actually have been born into money, but if this is one of your goals, you have to have a plan of action. If you really want to make $200,000 a year, you can get to the point where maybe one time in five years you're making a million dollars a year. You've got to say, well, how am I going to get to do that? How much do I have to make? How much do I have to risk? What do I need to do? Well, I say trade in a demo account for a month. One week, maybe four. Start then trading a live account, risking a beginner risk. Then move to intermediate, 100, 150 bucks. And then you can step it up to advance where you're risking $500 or more. And then you get to your goals. The fact is it is possible to make $1,000 a day. This isn't something crazy. The stocks that I trade have momentum. They moved. I showed you some of the examples just from the last three days. And, and trading is a nice lifestyle because the amount of time that you're trading is just really not that much time of the day. And like I said, the gap strategy I train teaches you how to get an edge in the market. All you need is just one trade in there to do it and get it. And remember, it's really because of the institutions that you're making the money. So my class, again, is called the Golden Gap Course. It's a complete system to use to trade. It is a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks at our professional bearish gaps. Retakes are free. The class is online, so you can be anywhere in the world and take it. The class is this week on October 24th and 25th. From 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time, it is a full-on weekend, 16 hours. If you want to sign up, you have to email me for the sign-up information at melissaatthestockswish.com. The cost of the class is $3,999 U.S. dollars. I allow free retakes. So if you take the class this weekend and want to retake it again in uh, two months, three months, whatever, you can do it then and you don't have to pay for it. You only sign up and pay for it the one time. Now, I'm running a special, all new students of the Golden Gap course. Oh, I have July in here. I don't know why I have July. Uh, in October, receive the Wealth Manifestation class free, which I'm going to be doing in November. Now, this is a class, actually, which teaches you about your mind and money and some of the things we did talk about today, but more in depth. It's a three-hour course. I also teach another class called the Trends course. I'm offering this November 17th and 18th. This is during the week, 12 to 4. Cost of this class is $9.99. This is how to read long-term trends. This is not uh, for a gap trading as a day trade. This is for longer-term trends, for swing trades, or just looking at the longer-term trend. But I'm offering a special if you do both. If you want to sign up and pay for both at once, you can do both and save on both, and you'll save almost $900. So you get the Wealth class, the Trends class, and the Golden Gap class all for $44.99 and save almost $1,000. If you want to sign up for this, you can email me at melissaatthestockswoosh.com. And the deadline to sign up is Friday, the 23rd. And again, if you want to travel to the trading room for this week, Tuesday through Friday, you can email me. Kathy can put my information in again. It's melissaatthestockswoosh.com. You've really got to empower yourself with the right information to trade. You will never consistently make money if you don't have a focus, if you don't know what to look for, if you don't have the right knowledge, if you don't know how to take the position, get in and get out, know the time of the day, know the stock to look for, know the direction, and one of the key ingredients 
is, is pinpointing what institutions are going to do in that specific stock to find the right one, whether to buy it or sell it, because that's how you get the momentum. And that's how you get those kind of nice, smooth moves and things like I showed you in the trade examples. Does anyone have any questions at all? We have another minute here or so. If not, thank you so much for coming. Here's my email if anyone would like to email me if you want to sign up for the class or the special this week. Email me at melissaatthestockswish.com. Again, the class is October 24th and 25th. Does anyone have any more questions? Great. Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks, Online Trader Central.